Hey guys, what's up and welcome to Zoo Reviews Tech. I have here the B Ben N45S, and this here is an Apollo Lake N3450 uh, CPU with uh, four gigs of RAM or six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes SSD. So I wanna see how good this laptop will be because it honestly looks very promising and could even beat the Chewy Lapbook Air in terms of performance and match it in terms of everything else. So let's get right down to business. So the body of the b -Ben N45S is metal and it's very nice metal as well. The top is uh, very clean and it's just like a space gray with a logo at the bottom. And then if you look at the back over here, the back is just the same thing, metal with a uh, uh, spare SSD slot and the four legs down here. And it's also uh, space gray and it has screws at the bottom. So it feels very nice and it's um, a little bit heavy because it is all metal, but then again, it's a very worth it trade-off if you want a nice feeling metal laptop. Let's look at the port selection for the b -Ben N45S. And as you can see, there is a USB-C port, which I'm very surprised they included. There's also a mini HDMI port as well as a USB-C port. And if you turn it to the other side right here, you'll see that there is the DC headphone jack, USB, and a micro SD card slot. So there's a very wide and very good array of ports and I'm so happy that there is USB-C because it looks like many other laptop manufacturers are not including USB-C in their laptops, but I'm so happy that b -Ben, a rather unknown laptop manufacturer, is including USB-C in their laptops. So the laptop hinge isn't very stiff. You can open it with just one hand if you open it slowly enough. And you can see that how the keyboard lifted up a little bit as I opened it too fast like that. But nevertheless, it can um, open pretty easily. And the maximum angle is about 130 degrees, which is not bad, but I've seen other laptops do 170 without being a 360 hinge. So that would have been nicer, but nevertheless, it's still fine. The other thing to note about the hinge is that when you try and um, wobble it, it'll open by itself. So as I'm wobbling it, see how the hinge is opening more and more. So it isn't the stiffest hinge um, ever, but it's definitely stiff enough for normal use. You just can't jostle it around too much, otherwise the hinge will open by itself. Let's take a quick look at the bezels on the screen. They're not too big, but they're also not too small either. See the side bezels over here? They are about four to five millimeters, and they're definitely not as small as what you find on the um, XPS 13, where the bezels are like two millimeters thick. The top bezel is big enough to accommodate a uh, webcam, which we don't see on other laptops with super thin bezels. And the bottom bezel is fairly big, as you can see, and it also um, accommodates the B-Ben logo. Um, it, the bottom bezel is a little bit bigger than I expected. I was hoping for something smaller, maybe the same size as the top bezel, but you know what? It's still fairly okay, and I think they had to make the bezel at the bottom that big to accommodate this big trackpad on this side over here. So let's take a look at the keyboard. The keyboard keys are fairly high travel, so there is a fair amount of travel on the keys. The keys are a little bit soft though, so it doesn't require a lot of force to activate the keys. But nevertheless, I could achieve my full um, typing speed on this full-size keyboard, and I very much appreciate how there are full-size arrow keys over here, full-size page up, page down, and, and home. Instead of leaving a huge bezel over here, they have chosen to include an extra row of buttons, and I very much appreciate that. These keys are also not backlit, but there's one thing that I don't like, and that would be the power button over here. The power button requires the same force to activate as other buttons, so you can very easily just turn it off like I, like I just did, which can get quite annoying. So let's take a quick look at the trackpad. The trackpad is quite accurate, and the surface of the trackpad is very nice as well, and I, and I really like the feel of the trackpad. There are some trackpads that are glass, and so your finger doesn't glide very smoothly across the uh, surface, but here, it's nice and big, and also the surface is pretty smooth. And as you can see, two finger gestures actually work quite well. So as you can see, the scrolling is very, very good on Internet Explorer. Very, very responsive. Almost as good as the XPS 13 and the uh, MacBook. But as you can see, there are still some areas where it could use some optimization. But nevertheless, it's still very good. If you go to Google Chrome, you can see that the uh, multi-finger gestures are also not bad. Um, let me go to the news on, in Google Chrome. As you can see, the trackpad is very accurate. And if you uh, scroll on this, it's slower than Internet Explorer, but it's still very usable and very smooth. So I'm quite impressed, as it seems like Chinese manufacturers are getting better and better at op optimizing their trackpads for multi-finger gestures. All right, let's take a quick look at the display. 
The display here is a 1920 by 1080 p IPS display and it looks fairly decent. I'm going to play this clip for you from uh, Battlefront 2 trailer. So as you saw there, the uh, screen here is quite good. You can see that there is quite a lot of detail on the screen and the color saturation on the screen is also very well defined. You can see that there is very deep colors and the uh, motion on the screen is also very nice as well. So definitely quite satisfied with the screen here. A quick look at the speakers. I'm actually quite impressed with the speakers that the B-Ben N45S has. It's actually very, very loud, almost as loud as the Xiaomi Air 12, which is quite impressive. The other thing to note is that the audio quality is also not bad. There is a decent amount of clarity. The mids and highs are there, but there is a little bit of a lack of bass, but it's actually one of the better laptop speakers I've tested in quite a long time. So let's listen to this clip from Battlefront 2. So I want to talk about battery life a little bit here. This laptop has a 10,000 milliamp hour battery powering the um, N3450 and a 1413, 14, 14 inch IPS screen. And I would say that the battery life here is actually not that great. I could get maybe five to six hours of web browsing um, on Chrome, and I could get maybe like seven hours of web browsing using Internet Explorer over here. Now. This is a very useful slider because you can slide between best performance and best battery life, which will automatically change the software for you. And it actually works pretty well, I found. I found that if you go all the way up to here, your battery life is like five hours, six hours. But if you go all the way down to best battery life, you can increase your battery life to say, maybe like a seven to eight hours if you really try and save battery. But I'm gonna turn it up for now so that you, you can see what it's like at maximum performance. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the performance of the laptop. With the 64 gigabytes SSD and the 64 gigabyte SSD storage, the performance here is pretty good. I would say it is a little bit slower than other SSD Intel um, N3450s, but it's definitely a lot faster than what you find on a uh, EMMC drive. And for example, I could browse Chrome just fine. I could uh, stream 4K video, not in Google Chrome, but I could in Microsoft Edge, so that's fine. So as you can see, I could edit some photos pretty well, but as you will see, some of the add-ins and the filters uh, take a little bit long to um, complete. That would usually take zero seconds on my desktop. And for example, if I want to change the brightness and contrast, that takes quite a long time to change it. So if I do that, you'll see it uh, render um, layer by layer. See that? It's usually instant. But it's still pretty good. Finally, if I wanted to export a file, it would also take a fair amount of time, but it's not that crazy. Yep. So yeah, if you want to do some light photo editing, you definitely can, you just can't have too many layers going on at once. 
Now this laptop can also do some video editing, which is quite impressive. Um, here are some 1080p and 720p clips, and you will be able to edit them pretty well, but you definitely can't do 4K. No way you're going to do 4K on this laptop. So you can cut pretty easily. There is a little bit of lag in the, uh, in the viewing screen, but that's not that much of a problem. So if you want to play anything at 1080p, you, you definitely can't, can't do that on this laptop. You need to play um, lighter games, for example, Cuphead at 1080p. Um, but if you want to play light, like uh, more intense games, 720p is all you can do. For example, if, if you wanted to play Dota, you really couldn't do that at 1080p at 30 frames per second. Um, you, you would need to do 720p. And even then, sometimes you would get a, a lower frame rates as well, which is a little bit sad for the Apollo Lake N3450, but it is um, normal. Oh boy, this is actually a really hard game, Cuphead. This is like level one, and I'm like dying. But yeah, so um, it, if you do want to play some uh, intense games, uh, you probably could, but you have to do it at super duper low resolutions. Um, this is this laptop would mostly be good for less intense games or side-scrolling games, for example, Cuphead, which is what I'm playing right now. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about Wi-Fi speeds and USB transfer speeds. I could transfer stuff at pretty high USB 3 speeds from my USB 3 um, portable hard drive. The Wi-Fi speeds are actually quite variable. For example, if I'm close to my uh, router, I can get insane download speeds, like up to like 4 or 5 megabytes a second. But if I move away from my router, maybe like 20 feet, then the speeds drop dramatically. And sometimes it doesn't, which is a little bit weird. So I think the Wi-Fi um, could definitely do with some improvement with the firmware because I'm really not getting that consistent speeds with the Wi-Fi here. So yeah, these are my thoughts on the B-Ben N45S laptop. This is definitely one of the better uh, Apollo Lake N3450 laptops um, to be released so far. It has great build quality. The screen is good. It has a 128 gigabyte um, SSD. However, I still don't think this is a laptop you should get because it's very, very expensive. If you look over here, the uh, price of the laptop is $430, and that is an extremely high price for an Apollo Lake N3450 laptop. You can get much cheaper laptops for, this, uh, for the same specs. For example, the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro. You can get that for a lot less, 230 bucks metal build. It might have an EMMC instead of an SSD, but still, that's still very, very cheap. So yeah, even though the B-Ben N45S is one of the best Apollo Lake laptops I've used, it's still not gonna be worth your money because of the price of $430. Let me know what you think about the laptop in the comments down below. Likes and subs are definitely appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.